Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This is the X9 handheld game console. Thank you very much to Banggood for sending this out to me. Here is the condition of the box as it arrived to me. I don't anticipate everyone having this box like this when it gets to them is just, you know, information purposes. Maybe customs looked into it just to make sure that it is what it said it was. Uh, the X9 has been repackaged. Basically, this is an XP5 or an X8 Ultra. I don't think that the chipset changed. Everything that I look up online, all the support is pretty much the same. Although, for what it is, it's actually super impressive. It does have a 5.1 inch twisted pneumatic paddle, so uh, viewing angles are not going to be very good, and I'll show that off in there. So it says support CPS games, but I have not been able to get any CPS game to work. It says GBA and uh, Super Nintendo, which do work to varying degrees, and it, one thing that they don't list here is Nintendo, and Nintendo does work. The Lion battery is actually pretty good. I just had a game running for about four hours before the battery gave away, so having four hours of battery life with the screen at half brightness, that's actually pretty good. It says supports micro SD, but I didn't really care to put anything on there as it includes eight gigabytes of onboard storage, which is more than enough for what I, I needed. It does have a 1.3 megapixel camera, not that I would advise anyone to take video or pictures on this device. The MP3 playing portion of it is actually pretty good. Uh, it can work as a kind of a cheapo boombox uh, as as well, and it does a decent job at that. And also playing different MP3s is fine. As an MP3 player using a 3.5mm audio jack or just the built-in speakers is uh, fine by me. I think it's something that I could get behind, especially for how inexpensive the device is. It plays M MP4, MPEG, AV, and RMVB. The RMVB is interesting to me because it's not very big in U.S., but I know it's very big in Asian territories. Real media uh, for being one of the few codecs that could really compress uh, anime and other things down really, really far. So it's interesting that you do have RMVB codec support as well, but it does support MP4 and MPEG, which is amazing, uh, especially because, again, on average, you can find this very easily for $35. I've seen it go down to $30 on like Mega Sale. And at $30, it's really insane. So for a device that you wanted to get for a kid to try out for like retro games and stuff, easily recommended because of how inexpensive this device is. So without further ado, let's take a look at the device itself. Here is mine. I chose blue because I thought blue was a cool color. Especially the, the color choice that they have. The D-pad is unfortunately really, really bad. I would advise anyone using to use the analog stick. Not that any of the games that you're playing will support analog input at all. These are just a glorified analog to digital. It's a digital pad that works better than a D-pad. Uh, the face buttons are actually good. They have good action to them. They feel good. They feel responsive when you press them. And they're, um, they're decent. I was playing uh, Metroid Zero Mission. Uh, the GBA ROM and it worked fairly well. Here you have your volume uh, buttons. You have plus and minus. Here is start and so select and start. And one thing that they don't mention in the instructions at all is how to turn it on. So here is no off, which is um, kind of a typo. It should be on and off. Here's your TF card, micro SD card, uh, mini USB. It does include the cable and a pair of headphones that aren't very good. Three and a half millimeter auto jack and a mic. The mic you can do use for uh, recording audio for when you're recording video as well, or you can just use it as taking voice memos, which again, I don't really recommend you doing. So how you'll power it on is you'll switch it to the no position and then you'll hold start. And then we'll be graced with the twisted pneumatic panel itself goes through this little weird boot intro where it just kind of does rapid stuff. But if you take a look at the viewing angles, they're not the best. So these games cannot be changed, these front-facing ones. They will always be there no matter what you do. Very quickly, I, uh, I'll show you games that I imported just to see because some of the documentation indicated that it also supported uh, Neo Geo Pocket games, and it doesn't. So there's a few interesting things, and it accomplishes everything that I would really request out of an emulator. This is Earthbound for Nintendo. Um, so using turn-based games are one of the things that I would really recommend for these types of games because uh, this system because it doesn't really have the best performance. It'll play games despite not really, not really, it really shouldn't be playing a lot of the games that it has loaded on here, especially action games. There's certain GBA games that just run really bad, Super Nintendo games that run very bad. But you can save your game, so you can save your instance and then load back to that instance. Additionally, one thing that is not mentioned in the uh, manual is key mapping. Uh, so if you wanted to change the key, how do you do it? Well, you there's a, this button right here, which is the A button, which would normally be a Y button or a triangle button. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold that button down. 
Let's do that again. Hold that button down. Wait for that sound, and then this highlights. We'll go ahead and select R again. Uh, but let's just say B, right? Uh, well, that's it says B, but it actually is A. So let's go back to R, all right? So B, R. Now you're saying, how do you get out of here? Well, you just hold this button down again. And then right there is how you change the key mapping, which, again, is not described anywhere, and it took me a while to figure that out by myself because, you know, how the hell do you figure that out? So if we press select to go back, uh, well, uh, X to go back. Again, this is uh, uh, NTSC, but Asian style, so out of Japanese style, where B is the circle and X, is, if this was X and this was circle, circle is accept and X is cancel or return. So uh, that's just the thing that you need to be aware of, that circle B is going to be accept and A is going to be go back. So go ahead, go back, go back. Let's go out here and we'll go to quit. And we'll take a look at, that was a NES game, let's take a look at Super Nintendo. Go ahead and load my progress that I had saved that previously. And you can see that this is one game that just shouldn't be played. You can see that the frame rate is not good at all. So if you're going to play Super Nintendo games, while it does support it, I would really recommend that you play turn-based games or strategy games. Games where you can kind of analyze what needs to be done, assign some actions, and then go ahead and do it. So let us go ahead and press select here right now. If we go to option and we go to screen size, there's two options. There's full screen and normal. Normal will run it at the resolution that the Super Nintendo is supposed to be outputting at. Um, I, if you're giving it for kids and stuff, I don't think kids are going to want to be playing it at an accurate resolution. They're going to probably going to want to play it with the screen fully maxed out, which is right here. But again, it doesn't really work that great. So uh, again, aim for RPGs, TRPGs, SRPGs. This is a Metroid Zero Mission, the GBA ROM. And this does actually run fairly well, which is I was happy to see. So, and again, you can just click select and you go save prog save game, setting succeeded. So let's let's back out and we'll wait for that to kind of do its thing, right? And you see that we went up there and if I go here and I go to load progress, there's only one save setting and it goes back there. That's the only thing that I care about. I mean, having an, a handheld emulator, you're gonna wanna be able to save your instance uh, and it does support it on NES, GBA, and Super Nintendo. So having done that, let's go ahead and back out of here. We'll quit here and we'll go to the MP3 player uh, portion of the demo, which is uh, one thing that I actually find to be kind of okay. You can see the iTunes type of interface that it has for the music. And we'll play um, Gangnam Style because this is what's included. This is max volume. Open Gangnam Style. And I know that there's a lot of, it's kind of popular to have like mini boom boxes. So having that ability to also use that in, uh, in that way, this handheld console is an added bonus and it works very, very well. Uh, additionally, the music still works despite that the, the screen is not on. And if you do, so everything still just works. So we'll go ahead and stop, stop the music. Go back here, we'll back out, and we'll go to the media player, and I have deleted some stuff, it's called Cinema down here, and for what it's worth, it does play video pretty decently. So uh, here is a trailer that was built, already put in. Again, it's only a TN panel, but you know, frame rate and playing the file, it does work pretty well. So if you were going to be using MP4 or RMVB, like if you had a, a collection of RMVB stuff that you wanted to play, it will play it. Uh, again, if we... Let's back out of that. So that's the, the big features of the X9. Of course, it also has things like camera, which I don't really suggest. We can kind of take a look at what, what kind of... Let's do uh, capture. And we'll take a look at what this looks like. So... That's the box. This is what the camera sees. Again, I wouldn't recommend doing anything with the camera. It's just a, a thing that they threw in for God knows what reason. 
Um, and then all of these games up here that can be played. These games can't be removed. You just plug it into your PC and you'll see them. These are classic games. These will take up near five gigs of your eight gigs of storage. You'll have three gigs yourself. But like, if you wanted to go say Breath of the Fire, Breath of the Fire 2, go to load progress. And then I have no progress, so it'll just start from the beginning. But like here is a game that you could totally play on this handheld. Because even though performance might not be the best, it will still be decent enough to play on this device. So for for the amount of money that they're asking for, $35 as a very cheap handheld, I could easily recommend these things. I have a uh, I have a weird fascination with these types of devices. I've been buying. They have a lot of other ones that are just kind of NES hardware clone NES clones, but handheld wise, and they only do Nintendo stuff. And you can't even put games on there. They just come with like 300 built-in games, and a lot of them are Chinese clones. Like you have Plants vs Zombies, the NES clone. But being able to put your own ROMs on this as well is a big big thing. Um, so yeah, this is the X9. My fingers got all smudgy all over it. I do apologize for, for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's for, for what it is, it's actually, I don't know, it's super impressive. I, I look forward to the future and seeing how far these little guys go, how, how these cheap little clone handhelds work. Um, maybe in the future we'll have like better emulation and better screens for $30. It's, it's crazy amounts of value that you get out of these little things. Anyway, that's the X9. Thank you so much for watching.